Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to create this render in Blender Eevee, so stay with me until the end. I've designed this environment before and now I want to add lights, effects and finally render it using Eevee. The environment is quite simple but has enough details to achieve a valuable render. You can see a bit of illumination in the scene. Go to the world settings and reduce the strength. My environment is a basement without any windows so I don't need too much default exposure. Now it's time to add lights to the scene. The first light I need is an area light. Press Shift and A, then go to the light and add an area light. Then go to the light settings and change the shape to the rectangle. Let's change its position. If you want to know about lighting in detail, you can watch this tutorial. And then let's scale up the light. I need to increase the power of the light to a higher value. Ok, it's too high, let's reduce it. In the light settings, go to the shadow section and enable contact shadow. If I move near a specific object, I can see the effect of the shadow. Now I need to increase the thickness of the contact shadow. Alright, now I need to duplicate the light using Alt and D. Using these shortcuts, when I modify one, the other will be modified too. Except that you can use Shift and D. Now I need a point light. Press Shift and A, then go to light and select point. I need to place it in the position of the third ball. Ok, let's change the power of the light to a proper value. I also need an appropriate color. After that, I need to increase the radius to get more unfocused light. I think the power is too high. Let's enable contact shadows for this light as well. And then increase the thickness. If I activate a fog volume that I've created before, I can achieve a more realistic effect. It's beautiful. Let's take a look at the fog shader. It's a simple principled volume shader. You can use these values in your own shader to achieve this fog effect. Let's enable the EV post processing effects in the render settings. The first is ambient occlusion, which creates an ambient shadow like effect. Look at the margins of the room and then activate this effect and then increase the distance value. I can say the distance is the length of the AO and you can see the differences now. I think 12 is good for the distance. Leave the other fields. Now I need these lights to be shining, so activate the bloom effect. And under its settings, I need to increase the intensity. The of fill is a beautiful effect for the camera, perfect for creating cinematic renders. You can watch this tutorial on depth of fill in Blender. I need to activate these values to achieve higher quality. And I need to activate this effect for the camera later. I can achieve reflections on the entire scene by activating this option. For example, I have wet areas on the floor and I can see very small details by activating this effect. Also you can increase the thickness to get thicker reflections. By activating motion blur, I can achieve a blurriness effect for the camera when it moves. It's useful for animation and I can say the shutter controls the intensity of this effect. In the volume section, I can modify the volume properties. For example, the end field represents the end of the volume. By increasing the samples, I can achieve higher quality. And it's better to activate volumetric shadows to get better results. For example, look at this area and see the differences. You can get better normal angles by activating this option. In the shadow section, you can reduce the shadow resolution. Or you can disable soft shadow to improve performance but lower quality. And it's not as good when compared with soft shadow. In the indirect lighting, I can bake the lights to get indirect effect. And I can get this effect in shadow areas. But first I need to add something. Press Shift and A, Light Probe and Volume. 
I need to scale up using S key and fit the volume to the whole scene. It will gather all lights and bake them to achieve an indirect lighting effect. In the volume settings I can increase or decrease each point. If I have more points the quality of the result increases. Let's increase the points using these fields. All points in the X, Y and Z axes are changed. Now I can press bake indirect. Please note, more points in the volume means increasing baking time, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. The baking process is done and you can see some indirect light in the shadow areas. For the final render I need to check the camera. Press 0 to go to the camera view. Go to the camera settings and then to the depth of field section. You can see some blurriness in the near distances. I can change this distance using the focus distance field. Lower values blur the far and vice versa. For tips on using the camera, you can watch the cinematic tips tutorial here. Go to the solid mode by pressing the Z key, then render the scene. Alright, this is the result. In the final step, I wanna composite the render. The image output is connected to the composite node, which I can see it in the render result. Activate use nodes and then enable backdrop to see the result. Press Shift A and search for the viewer node. By connecting the image to it, I can see the result in the background. In the view tab, you can zoom in on the image using the zoom field. I need to change the color tone first. Search for color balance. And connect it to both final nodes. I want a green tone for the result. Each channel represents a specific color, for example shadow color, scene color, and so on. The next step is a vignette effect. Add an ellipse mask node. Now I need to modify the width and height to get a big circle and black areas in the margins. Then add a blur node and connect the ellipse to it. Set the X and Y to 1 and increase the blur size and make some small modifications. To blend this effect with the image, I need a mix color node. And then set it to overlay. Okay, let's reduce the fact value. The margins are too black. Then I need a lens distortion node. and the dispersion value must be changed. There is a beautiful effect in the margins, but it's too intense. I need a lower value. For the final touch, I need to add a texture node to apply film grain to the image. Then go to the texture section and press new. And set the type to clouds to create a noise texture. Change the color type to color and then reduce the noise size. Ok, I need another overlay node. Then connect the color output of the texture to this node. Finally, I need to load the noise texture. I need to scale up the texture a little bit. You can see some film grain that can make my render more cinematic. Go to the rendering tab and see the final result. As you can see, EV is powerful if you work on it precisely, especially for environment rendering, but you can't rely on it for rendering characters or with small details like skin. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.